one of the most hyped up UI libraries in the front end world recently has been Shad CN UI, but that's not what this video is about. It's about another library inspired by it that takes things to a whole nother level, and it's a total goldmine for lazy developers like me. Like if you're building an app to get in on the latest crypto FOMO, you can easily drop in this card to get this cool encrypted text effect, or maybe you want to shoot a laser beam when you scroll down the page, or how about some animated plasma waves for your hero section? That's just a small sample of what you can do. In today's video, we'll learn how to use Eternity to build awesome UIs faster, but also dive into its code to learn the secrets behind its magic. Before we get into it though, let's talk about the library that inspired it, ShadCN. Web developers already have tons of awesome component libraries, like Material, Chakra, Bootstrap, and so on. And at first glance, ShadCN looks like yet another component library. It's got buttons, forms, progress bars, and all the other components you'd expect. What makes it unique is the way you actually use it in a project. And no, it has nothing to do with artificial intelligence, it's based on a cutting-edge new innovation called copy and paste. You see, normally, when you install a UI library, it dumps a bunch of code into your node modules folder, then you import each of these components in your code and customize their appearance with props. You never actually see their implementation details, which can be a good thing, but can also be a problem if you want a lot of control to customize their appearance. Now, if we take a look at the docs in ShadCN, you'll notice that instead of installing a package, we use an npx command, which will actually copy and paste the source code into your project, and that gives you far more control over the code to change things as needed. In other words, it's not a component library, but rather a collection of reusable components that you copy and paste into your app. ShadCN has dependencies of its own, like Tailwind and Radix UI. If you like Radix components, which will give you that first cell dashboard-like look, then ShadCN is a highly efficient way to implement common UI components without doing everything on your own from scratch. The creator of this project works for Vercel, but it's not just for the React ecosystem. There's also implementations in Svelte and Vue. But remember, I said this video is not about ShadCN. It's about a similar library that also brings in Framer Motion to go crazy with the animations. The library is called Eternity UI. They didn't pay me or sponsor this video, but they're a web development agency that will also design custom components for you in exchange for money. But all the base components are totally free. In order to take advantage of them, we need to make a couple of assumptions about your project. You're using React, Tailwind, and Framer Motion. Now, even if you use a different framework, like Svelte in my case, you should still keep this library on your radar because it's a good source of inspiration, and you can always reverse engineer this stuff in your own framework. But currently, I'm in a vanilla Next.js project with Tailwind installed. What I want to do is add this cool MacBook scroll animation to my homepage. When I first looked at it, I thought that MacBook must be a PNG. But get this, the entire MacBook is HTML and CSS. Every key on the keyboard is its own div and React component. It's crazy, and the developer must be some kind of madman, and we get to reap all the benefits. So let's begin the reaping process. First, we need to go and install the dependencies. We've got Framer Motion, which is the animation library, CLSX, which is for merging CSS class names, Tailwind Merge to merge classes in Tailwind without conflicts, and Tabular Icons, which is an icon library. Once installed, we need to create a utility file that exports a function to merge the class names together. From there, we need to update our Tailwind config file, which also includes a utility function for adding Tailwind colors as global CSS variables. But now it's time for the fun part. We create a new component file, then simply copy the code on the website here, take it into our project, and then paste it. Professional developers will use Control v here to optimize speed, but just be careful not to hurt yourself with pro tips like that. Let's go ahead and serve the app locally, and now we have this awesome animation with almost no effort on our part. Now, one thing that's cool about this copy and paste approach is that we have full control over the code. Like, for example, if we look at the React code, you can see we have a component for every key on the keyboard. If we wanted to make this a Russian MacBook, we could just manually change the keys to be Cyrillic. Or if we don't like the colors, we could easily modify the Tailwind CSS code. In other words, we've got a great starting point that we can now build on. It's really that easy, but now I want to take a look at some of the more advanced animations in this library and talk about how they're actually done under the hood. Let's first start with this Gemini animation, which you might recognize from Google's Gemini homepage. As we scroll down, the lines on this graphic become brighter. It looks like this would be extremely difficult to pull off, but it's actually easier than you think. What you need first is a scalable vector graphic. In the SVG, we have a path, and that path has a length, but notice how it's a motion path from the Framer Motion library. To make it invisible, we can start the length at zero, but then make the path length state on the React component that updates when the scroll position changes. As the user scrolls down, the path length increases, thus animating the SVG. And you can see more examples of SVG line drawing in the Framer Motion documentation. But the next component I want to look at is Sparkles. This one will add a bunch of sparkly dots below some text in your UI. Pretty fabulous, but how does this one work? In this one, we're not using divs and CSS, but instead using a canvas, which is far more efficient for highly complex animations with a lot of different elements. The magic behind this component, though, comes from a different library called TS Particles. This library 
is plain JavaScript and framework agnostic, which means if you like this effect, it should be relatively easy to implement in any framework. Next up, we've got the text generate effect. This effect simply types out text on the screen. Like oxygen gets you high, in a catastrophic emergency, we're talking giant panic breaths. Suddenly you become euphoric, docile. You accept your fate. It's all right here. Emergency water landing, 600 miles an hour, blank faces, calm as Hindu cows. The developer chose a quote from Fight Club, which is further evidence that there's some kind of madman behind this project. The way this effect is done is pretty easy. You first take the initial words and split them into an array. Then Framer Motion has a utility that allows you to stagger animations, so we simply offset each word by 0.2 seconds and animate each one in individually. But now let's check out an example with some more complex text manipulation. The Evervault card component looks pretty simple at first glance, but when you hover over it, you'll notice it has some text in the background that's constantly changing as you move the mouse around. In addition, the gradient in the background is generated based on the mouse position. If we look at the code, you can see there's a function called generate random string. Inside this function, we just have a string of characters, which is followed by an empty string called result. Then we have a for loop that picks out random characters from the original string to build out a new string. The loop runs based on the length argument to this function, which in this demo is 1500. That seems pretty inefficient for something that's purely cosmetic, but in JavaScript development, this is the way. If it looks cool, the code is correct. Even if the code is not super efficient, it doesn't really matter because the end user is only going to hover over it for a couple seconds at most. Now the other part of this component is the gradient in the background. The component is also tracking the mouse move event on the div itself, and when that event happens, we're calling the get bounding client rect method, which provides information about where that element actually is in the browser window. It then does some math with the mouse position in the viewport and that div to figure out where the mouse is specifically in the div. Then we pass those values to frame or motion with the use motion value hook. Then in the actual JSX, we have a mask image that displays a gradient in the background with an origin that starts at the mouse X and mouse Y positions. So basically anytime the mouse position changes, we repaint the gradient on the screen and also regenerate a 1500 character random string. And I have to say the end result is really cool. The next effect I wanna look at is the hero parallax. With this effect, you'll notice that when we scroll down, the graphics change their shape and rotation and eventually stick to the screen and start scrolling horizontally. Horizontally. I made a video about parallax in the past, which I'll link in the description, but the general idea is that as you scroll down, the elements in the background move at a different speed than one would expect. We're looking at a 2D screen, so we expect everything to move at the same speed. But in real life, in a 3D world, the displacement of objects is different based on the observer's point of view. Things close to you move fast, but things far away move slowly. In this demo, you can see we have a bunch of different spring animations here that control different effects like rotation, opacity, and movement along the X and Y axis. Every single one of these animations, though, is tied to the scroll Y progress. We get that value from frame motion with a React hook. In the UI, we can then strategically add these different effects to different rows of cards to get the desired effect. This process can be pretty painstaking, but there are some websites out there that go all out with things like 3JS to create these amazing 3D experiences on the web. Now, there's a ton of other UI elements that we could look at in this library, but you might as well just go out and try them for yourself. If you want to learn more about Next.js and React, check out my full course on Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.